so it should be coming up real soon. Hey, Deb, how are you today? Happy Friday. I'm looking outside. The sun is shining here in Chicago area. I think it's still kind of cold, but let's just dream that that warmer weather is going to be here soon. I think on Sunday, it's going to be a little bit nicer. Ooh. But you know what? Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> We're going to talk about a great subject today, and I think everybody will be interested in this. But first, I want to say we are not experts on this. We are doing the research on it. We just are, it's a subject we were very passionate about and want to know more about. And we just want to say if it is something you're interested in, make sure you contact your doctor or somebody that can help yep. you out. So Debbie, with that, you want to talk about what we're going to talk about today. How's that sound? Sure. Well, no, it sounds great. You know what? I just want to say that um, I want to attack team on to what you just said, Lori, is that honest to God, you know, we are definitely doing some of these subjects for our selfishly for our own personal selves because right. we want to learn more about it. And sometimes to be honest with you, everybody, you probably are like us. We wouldn't probably have picked up a magazine or, or went and did research without having a reason. Okay. We kind of would have just like let it go. Oh yeah. I want to learn more about that. Oh yeah. But now that we like dug into it today, Lori and I were just talking a few minutes ago and now we've got a whole bunch more things we want to bring out at later dates. Okay. So we're going to talk ma about making sense of food allergies. Okay. And yeah, allergies are out there. I think almost everyone can say there's a problem that they have with something or maybe something doesn't agree with them. Right. So it could be an intolerance to something that doesn't mean it's a full on allergy or it could be a food sensitivity. Okay. And this is becoming to be more prevalent. And I think what the interesting part about this is, is that so many people will have meals, okay, and they combine different foods, and somehow or another, they have an upset stomach after, or more than just an upset stomach, and there was all these foods on their plate, and they don't know what it was, you know what I mean? Like, And so they kind of just fluff it off, and they're like, oh, I must have just had, I don't know what happened or whatever, and then it happens again. And then they're like, wait a minute, you know, and, and honestly, speaking for my own personal self, I don't do real well with white carbs and they just seem to bother me in a lot of different ways. And, and we'll get into some of those little things, you know, a little bit into it. But I think what I want to start off saying, and then we're going to tag team Laura back and forth. But the thing is, is that some of the things we're going to talk about today, you guys, is going to be mind blowing because it piggybacks and offsets off of other things. And this is where I think everybody gets confused. And if I could only turn back time and be more educated in all these things that we've been talking about, I think myself and some of my family members and different could have figured this out sooner and maybe could have felt better. Okay, we're going to talk about the body. So we're going to talk about some stuff. Okay, so it's okay that we talk about get eat something and you get horrible gas. Okay. I'm sorry, but this is the way it goes. Okay. Sometimes you guys, that's a sign that your body is not very happy with you. Okay. And maybe something that you put in there, you shouldn't repeatedly put in there. Okay. I get it. Sometimes you can't control and sometimes you don't know all the ingredients and everything, but if we can kind of narrow it down and be an advocate for our own person and dig deep, we can maybe be a little bit more in tune and what this all boils down to. And you guys are probably going to be like, wow, I had no idea because I didn't. Okay. That some of the stuff that happens that our body is mad at and the food, whether it's a sensitivity or it is an allergy or an intolerance, because that's another way of it said, right. It hurts your immune system. Okay. So think about that. How many of these segments have we been through that we've talked about our immune system? Our immune system is huge, you guys. Absolutely huge. If your immune system isn't stoked, especially after what we've gone through lately in this last you know, pandemic, it can really be a problem. And there's so many different inflammatory stomach bowel things and all this stuff. So anyways, I'm going to just turn it back to you, Laura, and have you like start us off. I mean, one of the biggest things is the word food allergy, <laughs> you know, what oh, is a food yeah. allergy? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, you know, most of us know food allergies as, you know, peanut allergies, you know, that's mm -hmm. the most common mm -hmm. one. I mean, you hear about that in the schools, you know, now the schools are saying that they don't want you to bring anything with peanuts or 
They don't even want you to bring homemade stuff because they don't know how it's made. Um, but, you know, they're finding out there's so many other kinds of food allergies out there. You know, I mean, for years it was even fish and stuff. But there are so many ingredients and stuff that we don't even know how they're made. Um, they're finding out that there is, especially in food at the grocery store that's processed and that, it's not what they call clean food. You know, it's not like food that is homemade with homemade ingredients, you know, with, you know, like real olive oil and, you know, real stuff. It's all made with different things. So that's why a lot of people are getting these food allergies. And, um, you know, they're finding out that, you know, they're eating food like Debbie says, and they're having reactions to it, you know? And so there's a lot of ways they could test for food allergies. And the one is the main one is a blood test. They do a blood test and that's a way that they could test for it. But, you know, I was really fortunate this morning. I had time to go on YouTube and I watched a ton of videos on food allergies and what food allergies have done to people and that. And there was this girl on there. She was fascinating. I tried to put her clip on our Facebook page, but she was talking about how she had a food allergy. She went, was out of town and she got, she ate some, I think it was Thai food or something. And she grew up with like a peanut allergy. Okay. And she knew to be careful about that, but she came home from there and she started getting these blotches all over her and feeling like she's having major chest pains. And she ended up in the, um, in the ER and they were able to get her, so they were gone. But then she started waking up every day with these blotches. She had them for a year. Could you imagine that for a year? And then yeah. they, finally, they finally got out of control. But, you know, there's so many things that we can have food allergies with, you know, um, you know, a lot of this stuff, too. Now, we all have something that kind of aggravates us a little bit, but food allergies are something that happens consistently. Like you said, if you eat peanuts or you eat shellfish mm -hmm. or you eat something with gluten or, mm -hmm. you know, the gluten is the biggest thing lately. Uh, a lot of people are finding out with the gluten, like Debbie talked about. Um, but that's all I have to say right now, Debbie. I know you know a little bit more about some more allergies. Well, you know, here, and I'm looking at this, and, and again, this is some stuff, you guys, we don't, like, we don't make this stuff up. No. We, like, we got, we got papers here we got, like, yeah. that we've taken from, like, documented from information. Yeah. And this is actually from a health magazine. And, you know, it talks about symptoms like that from you know, food allergies, people are going to have some very interesting symptoms and not realize like the blotchiness is an obvious thing that they see. Well, some of them can be an itchy or tingly mouth. It can be tongue swelling, difficulty breathing. That's a big one for a lot of people, but it also, um, the immediate reaction can be dramatic, but it can also take a, a little bit of time, you know? And, um, so that's an interesting thing. And I also want to hear it says that it triggers an immediate marked response with your immune system. And, you know, your immune system, again, you guys, that like helps you in so many ways. Right, it does. You know, regulate and help and, you know, um, keep everything working because you know what? Your immune system at night is rebuilding. When you're sleeping, it's rebuilding. That's why it's so important that you get proper sleep. And it's so important, you guys, to drink a lot of water, especially even when you wake up in the morning, because then what's happening is that water that you drink and you, you know, get rid of it, it's taking all the toxins that were in your body and it's actually pushing it all out you know but you know here we talk about allergies but then there's also something called food sensitivity okay yes. so like how do you go okay am I really allergic or do I have a food sensitivity and some of the crazy things that are reactions that you can have and this is where I'm saying we could cross over to the subjects that Lori and I just talked about last week and Lori shared about fibromyalgia well listen to this though Gluten, okay, if you have a gluten sensitivity, you know, which is your corn, dairy, soy, and, and eggs are some of the most, um, yeah, right. you know, also in addition to gluten, 
you can have reactions like joint pain, okay, yeah. stomach pain, um, fatigue, rashes, and brain fog. Now, how many times do we all go, oh my God, I feel really out of it, or, you know, or I need a, oh my God, I need like a third cup of coffee. But you, it could have been because something that you, you ate made you feel that way. How about the turkey dinner thing that people talk oh, yeah. about? And, and, yeah. and another thing, you guys, this isn't even what we were going to talk about, but all of the stuff that goes in the darn food and everything these days, we don't know what's being put in there. In a perfect world, we should all have our own gardens and be eating yeah. the, the vegetation right. from the garden, but that might not work for most of us, okay? So anyways, but another thing that, that we're talking about with food sensitivities, it could trigger migraines. Right. Do you know how many people I know that get migraines on a regular basis and have, I had one girl that I knew, I have lost touch with her, but she was a friend that I did her here many years ago. She used to get these horrific migraines and they figured it out with some chocolate. And, and she loved chocolate, but she had to give it up. But she'd literally have to be in a dark room with no noise and be just like totally like just like calm and quiet, like light flashes and all that stuff was horrible, you know. So but there are tests out there. The good news is, OK, there are tests out there that can help you figure this out. And there's also um, situations I'm going to just say, too, about like and I'm going to go into this one and then Laura turn it back to you. But I just want to say these couple things. things. Food intolerance is another thing. Now, food intolerance is different than food sensitivity, different from food allergy. OK, it can also cause stomach pain. It can cause nausea. It can overlap with those things that are like different things that you think is an allergy, but an intolerance does not involve the immune system. Okay. So it's a little bit different, but some of the intolerance symptoms are crossing over. This is the thing. Everything we keep talking about is crossing over. So this is where you've got to be an advocate and you got to push right. through, make right. sure you're getting the right diagnosis or facts, right. everything possibly done because bloating, cramps, diarrhea, a lot of GI tract issues, which also can lead to a headache or you can have a headache, mental fogness and stuff like that. Some of the common foods that you can have an intolerance to are lactose. I hear that all the time. Eggs. You know, you know how many things have eggs in them, you guys? Like a ton. I know. I and know. then some so people, nice. yeah, and some people could be also um, caffeine. Okay. And so they could have an intolerance to caffeine, which is, is definitely not good. And so some of these will actually um, cause you to have illnesses, infections and all that because it affects your gut. And in a few, in a little bit, we're going to talk gut brain health because that's a huge thing. But with all that I just threw out there, Lori, I just want to bring it back over to you so you could put in some input. Cause I know that you were like, you were reading and listening and, and all that stuff too. So yeah, you know, uh, like Debbie was saying, you know, common things are uh, caffeine and eggs and our intolerance and stuff like that. I know I have an issue with uh, dairy, but I could have some dairy. I could have some cheese. But if I have too much of something, then I can't handle it, you know. And I think that's really common with dairy stuff, mm -hmm. with lactose mm -hmm. people and stuff. Um, it's just that there's just so much out there. I wish we could go back to the old times where everything is, we caught our own food. We had, like you said, we had our own gardens, you know. Um, mm -hmm. We're getting to that season now where we could grow our own garden. So it's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that a lot of the um, organic stuff is really kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. But in the long haul, if you have allergies and you have a lot of issues with food, that's the way to go. I mean, I, I have to sometimes weigh it out as far as the money wise, if the organic vegetables and stuff. But if you have food allergies and, and you're intolerant to stuff, I would suggest to go with organic. Don't you think, Deb? Oh, yeah. And, the you know, what, the, all right. the stuff. Because I'm going to go into the next thing, and this is yep. where it comes into it. It's uh, the environment toxins, you know, like oh, even yeah. what they use, you know, mm. the the pesticides, you know, mm. even your dish soap mm -hmm. that you use could cause you to have issues. Right. I mean, things you don't even think about. 
And, you know, I, I'm wondering even, I don't even know if it's on this list or not, but I wonder even the clothes that you wash, you know, what you use because. Oh that, yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah. You know, and anything that's used that's around food, you know, um, you know, it, it, your food encounters all these things, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why you got it when you get your vegetables and your food. And now they're telling you when you get your meat before you cook your meat, even like beef, that was not before. They want you to wash your beef before you cook. Really? It. Oh, yeah. A lot of the stuff that I see on YouTube, because we look up a lot of like recipes on YouTube, they always tell us to wash the meat. And oh. now it kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, you know, rinse the meat, clean off the stuff off of it. I never did that before, you know, but now it makes sense because you don't know what's on there. And, um, you know, and there's a widespread of that celiac disease, you know, that's an autoimmune thing. And um, my boyfriend's daughter, she's got celiac. Oh my gosh. But she had to do it to go find out if she had celiac was something else. She ended up at Mayo Clinic. Wow. And because she lives in Arizona, she went to Mayo Clinic in Arizona. But like, she didn't know for the longest time. She only goes to certain restaurants and, and stuff. And, and, you know, like this one girl on, on the YouTube channel, what she was saying because of all her issues and stuff with food and everything, she even had a card made up of all the things that she couldn't eat or be around. Ooh. And she had it laminated and she had them in her purse. And so when she went to eat at a restaurant, she even gave it to the waiter to give to the cook. Good idea. You no, know, but even stuff like, like, like that. I mean, I didn't mean to go off on a different tangent. No. It's all it's the just... same thing, you know? It's just all this stuff is involved in it. I mean, from cleaning to everything, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I know, and I, I'm just going to bring this up because it's in my thought process right now. And again, I run off in tangents. Debbie's good at keeping organized. <laughs> <laughs> um, I take a lot of medication, a lot. I take about 13 medications a day. I know that sounds crazy, but I have all the symptoms, all these issues of stomach and everything. And, you know, is it because of the medications or is it because of the food? You know, and that's something you need to talk to a nutritionist, which I go to see now a nutritionist and I'm going to see a weight management doctor and I'm working on all this stuff because I am finding out that some of my medications are causing some of my issues and some of my medications are not. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look into. Okay. Be an advocate for yourself. Like we've been talking the last few weeks, you know, mm -hmm. with the leptin and all that kind of stuff. So Debbie, you want to go on to something else about if you could be sure. healed from this or? Oh yeah. Well, and I just want to just go, touch back to real quick here for a second. The irritable yeah. bowel, okay, is yeah, also right. like huge, okay. But you also have to look at that. Like you might be thinking that's all you got going on, and that's enough. Trust me, because I deal with that. But you, you, it, but some of these other things. So I'm finding the trigger points that has ha has you know, made this more intense for me throughout time. And I wish I would have known that That's I was saying about backpedaling, but can food um, activity be healed? Yes, it actually can be. Okay. Um, but again, it, it, we're, we can't say enough about being your own advocate and journal what you're eating. And then there are a couple books out there and you guys, we didn't, we don't have a special book that we want to promote, but I will say this. Okay. There are a few books out there that talk about taking everything out of your diet and then eating very simple and then adding one item back at a time and seeing if that is what bothered you. But you could also like Lori and I were just saying that you can go to a nutritionist, you can go to a gastro doctor, you can go to an allergist, 
probably maybe with all of them because here's the whole thing you want to see if you can get a team of doctors they're all on the same page so that they can double check and rule out to make sure okay this is exactly what's going on because if you start down a path and you don't do the right thing you are going to either get worse or you're not going to get you're not going to feel well and then you're just you're going to give up and don't do that okay right. don't do that right. like you guys there's enough resources out there these days. There's enough information out there and, and just dig into it. You know, more and more, uh, I talk to people, you know, I'm talking to people all the time with my business and everything. And, you know, more and more people have either a very positive experience with a team of doctors or some people are fed up and like, they're like, okay, you know, I'm not getting enough results. Well then, okay, go find someone else. Okay, find someone else that suits your needs and, and is able to, you know, and you, it also, you know, the risk of having an eating disorder, which it's kind of a, a very tricky thing here. And I'm just going to touch lightly. They talk about um, when someone's fixated on eating certain things, it can actually be a problem. So right. there's a lot of psychological that we're talking about in what we're talking about, because you can get depressed. And you can get aggravated and then you could binge on stuff and then maybe you'll binge on the stuff that, oh, I'm not supposed to eat this, but I'm going to go ahead and eat it. And then you put yourself into almost, remember we, we refer to like a food coma, almost like where you've overate some stuff, but it's not... But it's not a joke, though. It's true. You know, it's true that you can if you've got too much of the wrong stuff. And, you know, my daughter's going through a thing where she's going to actually go to a gastro doctor and she, because she's been having sensitivity and she wants to figure out exactly what it is, because it's really, you know, you, you, you get some of the wrong food and then the whole day of or the next day or two or three days, you're almost like not that I'm going to say in bed and sick, but you're not feeling your best. And if you're not your best, you're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do. And you know what? We're all about the experience. Lori and I, like, we're always looking for having a good time, right? Being out there, socializing and all that kind of stuff. Well, don't do something to yourself or not do something to where you're not going to be able to enjoy the simple things in life, you guys going out there and having fun. Don't settle for, oh, this is the way I feel or, oh, this is not no, you know, get the help that you can find out what it is. Don't, you know, and don't be afraid to find out some of the stuff. And, you know, there are like, we have Linda Lalan. We have a great resource, you guys, <laughs> Linda Lalan. Okay. She's got the natural path in Downers Grove. She has got so much education. She can guide you in the right right direction too. she can tell you you know like hey here because she's not going to be able to do the blood tests and all that kind of stuff but right. those things like are the allergy testing you know like where they do i think on the arm or they you know there's so many different ways they do things these days i don't i don't want to quote anything because obviously i don't know what i'm talking about but i feel like i feel like this was a really fun subject in a way it, is well, it, it is now? you know what it's just it's just amazing you know i just want to say something too and i'm only saying this it's not because i'm making this about me you know that it's just i have a lot of experience with this for years i suffered so much with so many things i mean i knew it was a diabetic i didn't need to take medication or anything I did not go to the doctor. I was working. I was a single mom. I mm -hmm. just worried about taking care of my kids. I did not go to the doctor to the point where I got so sick that I had to go file for disability because everything got to me. And when I filed for disability, because I had so many issues, I had to go back and I had to go to see every kind of doctor and walk me through every process. And now because I did all, didn't take care of myself, I have like, I'm trying to get myself back together and it's hard. You know, I will never have my health completely good, but if I would have taken care of myself and I'm telling every one of you, I know you're busy with work. I know you're busy with your kids. You got to take the time, you know, and you need to explain that to your employers because a lot of these doctors are not there at night and on weekends anymore. 
and explain you need to go to the doctor just for precautionary reasons. And believe me, I'm telling you from my heart, mm -hmm. okay, this is what you got to do. With that, Debbie, you have anything else to say? I do. I want to say I am so proud of you because I want to say something. Lori, you've opened up to so many people. I don't want to start to cry, but you have. And you, here's the thing. You guys, we, it doesn't matter how old you are. You could be, I, we got people all over the place that listen to us and we're so ever so thankful. We're not, it's not about us. It's about what we can bring to everybody and about the health and wellness of you all and us all. And that's what this whole started. But the thing is, is it's not too late to start digging in and finding out what's going on and trying to make yourself be a better version of yourself. Right. You know, it's, it, there is, it's not, you know, and starting an exercise program or starting things that you haven't done before or starting to just get the water and start drinking this, replace this. Don't drink the sodas. Don't drink the crap. You know what I'm saying? And, and do that, you know, make those steps, even if they're baby steps. Yes. And, and and, and you know what, just go, okay, you know what, I, I, I deserve this, okay, because I want to feel better for my family, and I want to be around to be able to enjoy, whether it's grandkids or, or nieces and nephews, if you're not, you know, married, or if it's whatever it is, okay, it's, it's fun, so um, with that, I just want to say, we're just so excited that we got to do this, we have so much cool stuff coming i wish we could tell you what we can't because it's the curiosity approach here guys we are getting bigger and bigger people coming on with us and we're i mean it's just crazy i am here i don't know Lori. i i was thinking of something this morning i just got to share this in front of everybody you know i was actually working out i was thinking to myself i get to spend time with Lori a couple times a week like it's almost like we're together in the same room kind of thing and we get to do this right and i wouldn't have if we didn't do this but also at the same time everybody that we bring into this, this and we're able to talk with and learn about has blessed us i can speak for you i know it it's blessed us and i'm i know it's blessed other people because people have told us so again we're thankful guys share us share us share us we're, we're getting there we're getting there we're moving up we want to get a huge you know following and we're loving it it's fun you know, we never thought this was going to be like yes, this. You know? Yes, yes. And so. you know, I just want to say this before we say goodbye. I don't know if we even talked about it, but Debbie and her husband, they went to Vegas and they got to see Vin A, which mm -hmm. now he goes by Vincent with the Bronx Wanderers. Yes. So, I mean, yes. that was an opportunity that would have never happened if we didn't interview him. So we're really, she had such a great time. Unfortunately, he had a surgery that week and he wasn't there, but his family was there and the band was there, right? Deb, you had a great time. Oh yeah. And I just want to tell you one really quick thing. I yeah. honest to God, Lori had no idea how big these guys were. Like yeah. honest, I was pinching myself going, I'm sitting in this little like speakeasy with this huge th opportunity that I got to go there. And it was just so cool. But um, we will talk more on this because they're coming to Chicago again. Yeah. And so we have got to get a group to go because yeah, they are yeah, just definitely. the show. Yeah, oh, the show they put on is just phenomenal. So anyways, with that, love everybody. Love you guys, you thank you so much. Thank All you right, so bye, much. Bye, have bye, a wonderful bye. weekend. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.